What's going on guys? I wanted to make this quick little video on showing you guys a couple things that you need to know in order to mess with and troubleshoot automotive wiring. I'm going to try to explain this in the most basic way that I can, so if you do have any more questions, leave a comment below and I will try to get back to you. Okay, so first thing, you need, need, need a multimeter and you need a decent one. You don't need a fancy one, but you need a decent one. This one is really good. I will leave a link in the description. I think it's like 40 bucks. Not crazy expensive and it works just fine. I'm not a big fan of the super cheap like $10 ones or the ones you see that are super cheap. The little like square ones. I'm not really a big fan of those ones. But I do like this one a lot. So I will leave a link in the description. You guys can get this exact one for yourselves. So I just wanted to go over the symbols here. The ones we're going to go over today are this one. The V with the solid line and the dotted line underneath it. That is DC voltage. That is what you're going to be using using when you troubleshoot a car because batteries are DC voltage. This V with the squiggly line next to it, that is AC voltage and that is something for like houses or construction. You really aren't going to be using that for cars. So we're going to stick with DC voltage and we are also going to be using this one right here where it's got the horseshoe shape, it's got the arrow with the uh, like T next to it and what looks like a volume setting. This we're going to use a lot. This is to measure resistance and it can measure continuity. We are going to start with DC voltage and I'm just going to show you guys real quick how to measure DC voltage. So you get your meter pointing to DC voltage and it'll read zero and we're going to use this battery or just pretend it's a car battery. It's the same thing. It's a 12 volt battery. These two pins right here are positive negative. So what we're going to do is take our meter and measure there. So we have our two leads measuring the battery and we are getting 12.18, which is good. This battery is fully charged. On a car battery, typically if it's between 12 and like 12.8, 12.9, maybe 13, that's when the battery is fully charged. Anything lower than 12 is like, okay. 10 is like, uh, it kind of needs to charge. It's going to struggle. Anything below 10, it's probably not going to start your car. So that's how you measure DC voltage. And the meter will actually tell you if you have your positive and negative on the correct terminals. So say you're not sure which wire is ground and which wire is power so you put your two leads on and you look over here if there is no negative on this then you have your power lead on your power wire and your ground lead on your ground wire but I will switch these right now and you will see a minus sign go right next to the 12 so now we have that minus symbol next to the 12 because we switched our leads. Positive lead is now on the ground or the negative and the negative lead is now on the positive. So that just tells us that we have our leads reversed. So if you're ever curious on what's power, what's ground, that's an easy way to tell when you're measuring voltage for DC. AC is totally different, but DC, that's how you know. So that was how you measure DC voltage. It's pretty basic and hopefully that gave you guys a good idea on how you're supposed to do it. Now I want to jump into continuity. So we're going to take our meter and we're going to change it to this symbol which brings us to here and on this particular meter you have to press the function button twice until you get this little audio symbol and then when you take your two leads you touch them together the actual meter will beep and that's how you know you have continuity which all continuity is is basically completing a circuit or just creating a loop another way to look at it is you get a piece of wire and you connect it and you make a loop. And now this is one closed circuit. So this is continuity. Like this, you would have continuity and like this, you would not. So this is a closed circuit and this is an open circuit. So if we have one lead on one part of the wire and we take our other lead, put it on the other side, our meter beeps. And that lets us know that it's the circuit's complete and there are no breaks in this wire. So I now have this wire that is just wire nutted together. So now this is a complete circuit. It's just a complete loop. So if we take our leads and we go red lead on one side of the wire and our other lead on the other side, you can hear our meter is beeping. And now if we take the wire nut off and pull the wires apart and then do the same test, we get nothing. So if you are troubleshooting and you don't know if there's a break in the wire and you measure from one side of the wire to the other and you do a continuity test and you don't get continuity then there's a break somewhere in that wire and the easiest way to go about that if you cannot find the break is to just replace it with a whole new wire one thing that i think that you should get in the habit of doing when you're testing for continuity is every time you put your meter to continuity and you get it to the right setting just touch the leads together and make sure that it's going to beep because you never know if the meter is going out and if there is continuity but you touch the wires together you 
you're not getting continuity because the meter itself isn't set up correctly or it's going bad or something's wrong with the meter so you just always do that just to check it just takes a second and you hear the beep and you know you're good so one last thing that i want to go over is how a relay works so it's pretty easy to understand what this means basically these two right here are the coil wires which are positive negative they get the power that clicks the relay over which and it closes the circuit between the common and the normally open and when it's not energized the common and the normally closed are a closed circuit and there's no continuity between 87 and 30. So think of it like a switch. You use a switch to activate a relay. So say this relay is always grounded. So this side of the coil is always active, always getting grounded. Then the other wire number 86, which on this relay is this white wire, is set on a switch to where when the switch is turned on, this white wire gets 12 volt power sent to it. So it gets 12 volt power sent to it the relay will click and that is changing the state from normally closed to normally open blue wire is pin number 30 which is our common which usually has power sent to it as you can see it's coming off there there's a fuse going to the switch which also goes to pin number 30. So as you can see, 30 is connected to 87A right there. It's pointing down to it. 87A is the normally closed. So if you need something to have power constantly, and then you, when you turn the switch, it kills the power to it, and that's how it's supposed to be set up, you would wire it to common and 87A. Typically, you're not going to be doing that, but if you needed to receive power once you turn the switch on, you will wire it to 87, which is how this is set. Up. So this is set up for a light bar. So a light bar is going to have two wires, positive and negative. The negative will go to ground, it'll go somewhere on the chassis, or it'll go directly to the battery, however you wire it. The power wire, you're going to wire to 87. So when this switch gets flipped and it sends power to pin number 86, and 85 is already grounded, it energizes this coil in the relay, which causes it to switch from normally closed to normally open. This little lever will go from normally closed up to normally open and make contact with it. It'll send power from pin number 30 to pin number 87 which then sends it to your accessory in this case a light bar and the light bar will turn on and then you turn the switch off pin number 86 is no longer receiving power the coil de-energizes and it switches back to 87A, taking the power away from 87 and turning the light off. And that's about the easiest way to explain it. It's kind of confusing at first, but once you get it, it's pretty easy. Here's an example of how a relay would typically be set up. I don't know about you, but I learn better through visuals and actually doing stuff rather than just being told how things work. Right now, the ground from the light bar and the relay are both going to the negative side of the battery. Our power side of the light bar is going to the yellow wire, which is pin. 87 are blue and white wires which are pins 30 and 86 those are going to be going to the positive side so if we take our pins 30 and 86 go to the positive side our light turns on and you could probably hear the relay clicking as that happens Typically, the 87A isn't hooked up to anything because there's not a lot of things that require a normally closed circuit, but I will now show you how a normally closed circuit works. So it is now set up as normally closed. So right now, the only thing not hooked up is our pin 86, and you can see that the light is on. But if we hook up 86, the relay clicks and the light turns off. If we then remove the power going to pin 86, the light turns back on. If you have an accessory that needs to be always getting power until you turn a switch on it, then you would wire it up this way. The only difference is now the common is constantly getting power and the circuit between the pin number 30 or common and pin 87A is normally closed, so it is a continuous circuit. And once the relay gets energized, it opens the circuit between 30 and 87A and closes the circuit between 30 and 87. Well, I hope that helped to visualize it better for you guys and hopefully you guys have a better understanding of it now. It looks way more complicated than it actually is once you actually go and do it. Anyways, that is how a relay works. I also have a video on me doing my relay and fuse panel for my 240. In case you guys wanted to check that out, I will have that up in the corner. You can kind of, but not really see it right here because we have this cover on. But that's my fuse box. I know it's kind of big and bulky, but it's out of the way because I mean, this is a, you know, caged race car. If you're interested in that video, I will have a link for it. Also have a video on wiring up this entire car in case you guys wanted to check that out. So that will also be in the corner, but that's basically it. So if you have more questions, leave a comment down below. Check out my past videos. You can see stuff on the skyline. I also have an off-road 240 and we've slid both 
there's videos on that so go check those out well that is going to be it for this video thank you so much for watching if that helped please comment down below let me know leave a like if you did and hit that subscribe button see you guys next time peace